I am the Northman, and this podcast is going to be dominated by me. <laughs> That's the way I felt about the movie. <laughs> right. We're playing it. We're playing Viking. Yeah. Um, even though I liked, I liked it better than you think I did. Did you? I yeah. was kind of. I I felt like you were not having a good, uh, not having a good time at all. Why? Because of the sarcastic comments the whole way through. That might be it. The sarcastic comments, which were totally valid, by the I'm way. I'm not saying they're totally weren't. validated. It's a movie about a. It's a revenge film. First of all, I didn't know that. I thought it was going to be Braveheart with Vikings. Right. And I even had that written down on the project list idea. Like, I want to make Braveheart, but with Vikings. I still can. Yeah, you free reign now. <laughs> this wasn't Braveheart with Vikings. This was, uh, St- is it Stellan or is this Alex Skarsgård? It's, it's Alex. It's Alex. So it's yeah. Alex Skarsgård getting ripped and uh, basically <laughs> like, like it, it felt more like 300 with Vikings. You, totally. Yeah. You know? I, didn't, I didn't even think of that. But way that. less green screen. And uh, visually, I really loved the uh, the look and the feel, and you know, especially the wardrobe of of the movie, I thought that was brilliant. Um, first of all, did you do some research on this movie? I did not. Okay, so The Northman is about it's a revenge movie about this uh, this young Viking. They did, did they even say Viking in the entire thing? No. It's, 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 Why like are a, they calling it the Viking Ice, movie? The Icelandic people. It's, I was promised Vikings. <laughs> right. Where's the hats <laughs> with the horns? Like <laughs> like our friend Paul said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, did you see did you see the Northman yet? And he says, Oh no, I hate things about Vikings. <laughs> and I I still think that's the weirdest comment because how often do you run into things that deal with Vikings? Right. That that comment has been playing in my head ever since you said that to me when we watched the film. I was like, how? Vikings? Like, that doesn't have a lot to do with your daily life, I hope. Right. Well, maybe Vikings. in school they taught Vikings a little bit more. He's older than us. So. Fuck Vikings. Yeah. Like, I've never heard anybody say fuck Vikings before. Um, but Robert Eggers directed this movie and he wrote this movie co-wrote this movie. And so I was very excited because I really loved The Lighthouse and I uh, I was a, I was a fan of The Witch. Um, so his third film, seems like he's made more than two films. Right. But it was it's just it's just The Lighthouse and The Witch. Now coming out with The Northman, his big I guess his biggest picture. What's well, his biggest studio film and all of my comments, my sarcastic comments throughout the movie now doing my research on it, it the movie totally got taken away from him. Did it? Yeah. It felt like I, I kept thinking, Robert Eggers, this is going to be great. Wait a second. Where's the experimental filmmaker, you know, that, that that makes like really bold moves and cuts and sequences and shocks me. And there's a, there's a lot of that in there, but not to the degree of, especially not the lighthouse. Oh my God. Yeah. Robert, that, that was like an experimental film from A to Z. And even the witch, you know, they had there was so much visual style from a new director coming on the scene that was, that's why how that the witch is brilliant. And so this one was like, oh man, so this is just his biggest budget to date. He's he's always wanted to make a big studio movie. Let's see what he has. He's got big stars in it. He's going to go out on location and do this thing. And it felt like the muted Robert Eggers. Yeah. To to, to some degree, not totally. And that's why I was kind of disappointed by the movie. But then I read it and it was like he was faced. He didn't have final cut, which he usually does. Mm. He was facing pressure from uh, Skarsgård, you know, who sort of like is taking credit for coming up with the idea. And the he was studio. Producer. Yeah. The studio was saying like, no, the test audiences aren't understanding the <laughs> beginning of the story. So I guess the beginning, they cut a shitload out with Ethan Hawke and the backstory and shit like that, which I was thankful for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I read that too. They're like the test audience are like, you need a degree in Viking history to understand the movie. I, no, like, no, you don't. You can just watch the movie. Right. It's, it's a revenge film yeah. about people that just happen to live in Viking times and the dad dies and the son's like, I will avenge you. It's like exactly. Macbeth. It's basically just Macbeth. And then, you know, what happens? What do you think happens? It's nothing out of the ordinary, but that's why it was weird because I thought it was going to be so much more epic and huge and, you know, complicated and weird. And I wanted to walk out of it going, oh, I need a Viking degree for that. I wanted that. Right. I didn't. I went like, that's just like a studio movie with, you know, Robert right. Eggers' like little dusting of weirdness. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm disappointed, man, because of all the things I complained about, he didn't have control over, He, you know, and... That sucks, man. Right. Oh, my God. I didn't know that either. Yeah. So it's like I, now I love the movie because they're like, he still made a great movie because they fucked it up in the editing room, basically. OK. Yeah. That makes total sense now. Like he wanted to go longer and weirder and, you know, and, and they just didn't they didn't let him. They kind of touched on it a little bit with that whole like tree lineage and the spells. And yeah. The- I see where it all. I, if it was a director's cut, I could see where he put it all back in there. But he kind of even on his press tour said, I would still make a movie, a studio movie again. 
Um, and he was kind of played nice about it, even mm. though I would guess he's like, this was torturous for me. I bet. Yeah. After the first two movies that he had everything, he could do anything he wanted to, and then big budget with big stars, and they tell you no, I'll bet that was tough as shit to swallow, man. I bet. Oh, man, I feel for him, but, you know, the performances were, were good. I, I still think it's the, the biggest plot point or plot hole for me is who is doing all this killing? And there's only <laughs> there's like 12 people in your clan, and, and one of them is seven feet tall and he's ripped as fuck. And it just happened like a week or two after a bunch of people just arrived, so you could even, you know, I wonder a what's lot more. changed nowadays. Yeah. It might be the seven foot tall Viking with us. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> who knows? It's okay. It's okay. It was a little campy, too, which I think that was the point of it. Um, and the lighthouse was a little campy to yeah. some degree. You know, it's, it's psychologically campy. It also can exist. Um, the witch even had a little bit of that, too. So I think he maintained his direct his directorial vision. But I think it definitely shone through. I my, I thought somebody had clipped his wings to some degree. and yeah. went like, this isn't full, you know, balls out Robert Eggers. This is like, you know, tame to a certain degree. Yeah. Even though there was a lot of stuff in it that... that I really, you know, it really did shock me. And I was like, oh, there's that style. Um, it just, oh man, now it just feels like I, I hurt for him now. Because <laughs> a greater movie was in there. Yeah. Even if it was longer. And even if you still had a couple things that were kind of crazy that happened in, in the script. Um, but it's still, it, there, there are like a, a couple of times where I was making sarcastic comments about how easy the plot was. But if you think about mythology in general, like the you know, Greek mythology or Nordic mythology, all that storytelling is pretty generic and pretty uh, stereotypical because the stereotype had to come from that. Right. Where do you think they got it from? Yeah. You know, so it, it that I can make excuses for the plot where I'm going like, get the fuck out of here. Right. Come on. Yeah. They you know? have jump timelines back in the, the 70, uh, 700 AD or it's whatever. like Paul Bunyan or something, you know, like, oh, he's just walking around with a blue ox and shit like that. You know, it's allegory for something. And this guy, you know, being seven feet tall and having, you know, 24 pack abs <laughs> and they didn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's killing everybody or who's responsible? Um, just thought that was a little bit silly. Maybe that's why Skarsgård's like, I just want to look good no matter what. And I'm I mean, Mission Accomplished, dude. He looks yeah. amazing in the movie. Um, and then Nicole Kidman is a weird, like, weird performance from her. Like, I, I, she's never played like an evil badass. And, you know, I kept yeah. looking at her going like, I don't know. I felt like she was miscast in it too. She's she's such an excellent actress. I just you know there's some reason I didn't buy like her holding up the sword and going like kill him. Yeah, like, she, uh, she, I guess maybe it's just the uh, I don't know wasn't part for a Viking queen. You know, I don't know. I, and that's the thing. It, it's probably fine, but yeah. you know, it it felt like there's a whole lot more movie there on the cutting room floor. And what we got was really good. I just kept thinking, would I watch this again? And now that I know it was taken away from him, I'm going to I'm gonna watch this again just to see how scary it is to work with the studio. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Can well, I read I, the script, too? I did, I did watch it two times, you know, once with you and then once by my own. And it was yeah. it was completely two different viewings. I just remember the first time sitting by myself, though, and being in shock to some of, like... I mean, it is tamed down compared to his other movies, but kind of the brutality of it. It made me uncomfortable. And you know me, usually I can fucking... What brutality? Like, uh, like during that, uh, whatever the, the game was called, like, the, basically the Viking rugby with the stone and the... I mean, they basically did that scene in Twilight with the baseball game. Yeah, but that's, like, you you knew this is, like, instead of people playing baseball, everyone died. You know, it's, like, knights and things like that. So the realism of it, you know, how this actually went on, <laughs> I'm like, dude, imagine you're like, all right, well, I'm gonna go play baseball today. and then You've you gotten water down yourself over the years. I know, man. I'm, I'm unbelievable. I'm softy now. That was the scene you were. You were like, oh my god, they're beating the shit out of each when other. You smacked him in the. What about face? when like spears were going through faces and stuff like that? And yeah, you stabbed fine. that guy through the eye. And I everything. saw Ace Ventura when nature calls. You could take a bunch of darts. God, you're <laughs> such a weird person. You could you go watch torture porn, but somebody you know plays baseball too rough, and you're like, hey, my sensibilities. Well, I, the, the, the fact that it's based in this is how people you know somewhat lived i'm not talking about the magic newsflash for you my friend i know it was very things, barbaric things, barbaric back in the things day things were worse than that a bit worse than playing a game together and people get hurt and stuff like what what are you talking about again just, softer that's all it i is. just finished blood meridian by cormac mccarthy and that's about like basically the slaughter of native american people in in the southwest of america oh. in the in the 19th century okay so nothing in that book even came close to being as fucked up as that book is that the northman was so tame in general yeah. that's also it's like 
Where's my brutality? <laughs> this is Viking times. Now if, I feel like you're like if we I, roles. If I want to sit down and watch, I want to sit down and watch the, the the brave heart of Viking movies. And you know, I'm not. I had to mentally prepare myself to to watch a movie with brutality because you know, number one, I can't eat during it because I just find it disgusting. I'm not hungry. Um, and you know, you also have to go. Well, I'm gonna see some really fucked up imagery in this thing. And I and if I've got time to yell sarcastic comments at the screen, obviously it's not that fucked up. Yeah, I it's, mean. Slow burn in this cut. I watched Ambulance by myself and I wasn't yelling as many things at the screen. <laughs> and, that, and that movie's rife for criticism with, with yelling at the screen. But I was by myself too. It's kind of crazy if you start yelling things out. Yeah. But I, you know, I was trying not to type in my phone all the things I was saying either. Yeah. Um, the, but the, 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 the true genius of The Northman is how authentic it felt to, besides the six-pack abs, how authentic it felt to the reality of the year it took place. Right. You know, and, and how great a filmmaker that Eggers is just because, you know, he kind of got some things taken away from him. They had to edit. He was forced to edit his his movie into something that he didn't want it to be. Or maybe he did want it to be. You know, I mean, maybe he maybe he realized, well, this, this is the studio system. And I have to, at this level, you know, make certain concessions to or, or they're not going to let me work again or they're going to completely take this thing away from me. So I, I get it to some degree. You can only say no too many times before they're like, well, you know, we can fire you. Right. You know, like you don't have final cut. So you're going to have to make it work. So everybody's happy. And doesn't that just sound like the death of art? Yeah. It's the corporate corporatization of it. But on the opposite side from that, you get like George Lucas syndrome or Steven Spielberg syndrome where you, you know, and, and that's what happened in the 1970s. The new wave of Hollywood took over. And everybody got the keys to the kingdom because they all made blockbuster money for the first time. And they all went out and failed after that because nobody told them. Everybody told them that they were geniuses and don't cut a right. frame because you're a genius. And when that happens, that's not good. You right. need the world to come in and say, like, I don't like this. And here's why. Even if you disagree with them, somebody has to. Because criticism, whether you want to believe it or not, criticism makes your work better, whether that is good or bad. You can. You can say, I really love your painting because of these reasons, and that's going to stir some thought into you to either change it because you hate that person's opinion right. or why they like it, or you know, they're going to say it sucks, and you go, why does it suck? And they go, because you suck. And you go, wow, how do I change that on the screen? No, I don't. Because <laughs> you suck. Oh. Well, enjoy it. <laughs> like that, that word is just so pervasive in, in this industry, you know, especially with people and, and people's opinion in general nowadays. It always has been. Um, I, I remember even being that person when I first started getting into movies and then being a teenager, you go, well, I really liked, uh, I really liked speed. You know, I love that movie. And somebody, oh, that movie sucks. And you go like, why does it suck? And they go, it's got that sucks. Yeah. And you go, oh, wow. So this is just Neanderthal thinking. Right. I and it, it graduates up to a level of, oh, now I'm in film school and now I can't say sucks. But you say like, no, that that movie was terrible, and now I'll tell you why. Right, at least and I have reasons now. <laughs> that's, that's even more pretentious, almost to some degree, because you can argue against that anyway. Why yeah. don't we just stop saying things suck and they're terrible, and just say like we always say, like, what just wasn't for you? Yeah, well, it wasn't for you. It wasn't for me. Yeah, politicians, you know, anything like that. That 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 is not for me. Yeah, they're not for me. Whatever that that food's not for me. Right. I hate avocados. They're they're fucking awful. Well, you like avocados. Well, you suck now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <that's, laughs> Actually, anytime someone says they don't like avocado, I'm not an avocado. But you know, usually the punk rock side of me is like, like the Viking thing. Like our friend Paul is like, I hate Viking movies. And I'm like, I love Viking movies. Yeah. <laughs> like the North was great. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Two hours and twenty seven minutes, well spent, motherfucker. We should tell him to watch this just to fuck with him. I'm gonna tell him to watch yeah. it, and I want to see what he says. Um, yeah, it's 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 a straight. The movie doesn't drag. But it is like a storybook. It's like yeah. a storybook. You know, I they added the chapters too. He didn't want to do the chapters. Remember oh, that was really? One, that was one of my biggest things. Yeah. I was like, man, I hate when movies, not all movies, some movies I like that when they do chapters, but I don't want to know what I'm about to see with a chapter heading. I want to just watch right. the movie. And uh, and this movie did that. And I, I remember yelling that out and going, oh, man, this doesn't fit the narrative here. And that's, that was another thing they made him mad because people didn't understand what was going on. And you know what? If people don't understand what's going on, they go fuck themselves. That's that's where I come from as a writer director. Billy Wilder and all the all these great screenwriters they they will tell you, and it is the best visual storytelling technique. Let the audience add up two plus two equals four. Right. Every time you spoon feed them information, you're treat. David Mamet said this also. You're treating the audience with disrespect. You're telling them they're too stupid to get what's going on on screen. 
And granted, there are like Terrence Malick films where I don't know the fuck's going yeah. on on screen because I don't want to. It, it, that's just a whole other level of filmmaking, and he does his thing, and it's quite beautiful to look at. Right. All right. Doesn't mean it's I'm a fan, you know, and I, I like those movies or they're for me. Yeah. You know, but I can appreciate the shit out of them because boy, does he let that's long division. You're, you're telling the fucking audience, like, did you take calculus? Because right. you're not going to get this shit and you don't question it. And I guess that's where this movie kind of went wrong. It wasn't long. Div the lighthouse is long division. The lighthouse was like, yeah, wow, that guy's on a whole different mathematic level as a director than me. And so I'm. I'm not even going to try to figure it out. I'm just going to watch. Right. And it's a sophomore film, too. It's yeah. just like knocked it out of the park. Tenet was like that. The Christopher Nolan movie. You'd, I remember watching the theater and going, oh, I'm never going to figure this out in one sitting. So yeah. I'm just going to enjoy the ride here. Exactly. And I watched it two, three more times. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting it a little bit more. This guy's a master at the rewatch, right. Christopher Nolan. And that's where he, that's, that's why, I mean, like in terms of, Popcorn flicks, those are my favorite popcorn flicks. Like Christopher Nolan would be like this this day's Spielberg to me. They're so inve in inventive and, and visually talented. You want to keep watching their movies because they make you feel so good. But, but Nolan even makes you think more than the visual side of it. It's like, Jesus, this guy's intelligent. And, you know, somebody like Spielberg, you just know you're going to be entertained completely. Yeah. No Sit matter if you even like the movie or not, you're going to be entertained. Yeah. And, you know, and sadly, you know, as, as big a, a champion as independent film as I am, I'm probably in the entertainment side of the films that I make and the films I want to make more than I am like Jim Jarmusch or, you mm. know, Spike Lee or somebody like that. And and I, I wish I was. I wish I could go out and make Truffaut films or Fellini films. And I just feel like if I did that i would just be just thrown out of hollywood you gotta wait to make those you gotta you, you gotta, gotta be a little bit older for that i gotta, guess yeah get underneath the fence and well yeah it's true all those guys kind of make they made films their first films like godard and especially um like uh louis mall and uh yeah their first films were like crime movies and not yeah. like these esoteric journeys where you follow one character through the streets of naples or rome you know and, and then shit happens to them you're right they did they had to like sort of do a couple for them and then they could yeah. go make their their version so oh, once you get the credit then it's one for you one yeah. for me one for you one but for me. the the guy that directed dodgeball remember that movie yeah a true underdog story i yeah. think is the sub I, is the is the colon there i have a little soft spot um for which he uh ronald thurber marshall i think is his name something Sounds like that familiar. uh roland uh marshall thurber i think is his name um but he came to my film school and screened dodgeball before it came out and we watched it as a student body. And the movie, the movie made a nice chunk of money for that guy. And he could do anything he wanted to. You know, he made over $100 million, probably you know, maybe $200 million at the box office. And I think it was his first feature. Oh, wow. And I remember he was a nice enough guy. He went to USC. He created this thing called Terry Tate Office Linebacker. On oh, ESPN. yeah. I know remember what you're that? talking about. Yeah, yeah, he was funny. And I was thinking like, well, like, yeah, it, it, was a very, for me, it's a very easy script to write. You know, sure. it's like by the numbers, you know, this is going to be funny because you can you can just see the jokes already. If you go adults in dodgeball. Right. Bam, it's the easy. early 2000s. All the movies. It's yeah. Like kind of fits. right. Yeah. And it's funny. Hole. And, yeah. you know, it's like that, that that's fine. Dodgeball's fine. And it, it made, made me laugh. Um, the pirate character is kind of ridiculous. Steve the pirate. They're really stupid. <laughs> 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 and the Rip Torn character. I mean, yeah, it's just over the top. It's right. over the top. It's like a broad French farce. Um, but, you know, that guy. Uh, this is getting to a point, I promise. He made, <laughs> so speaking of like, you know, the the French New Wave guys making, you know, two for them and then they get to make their thing. You can't do what, is it Ross and Marshall Thurber? Ross and Marshall. Ross and Marshall Thurber. You can't do what he did You and go make, um, the second movie he made was called something in Pittsburgh, like um, like Voices in Pittsburgh or something like that. I am looking it up right now. It is Mysteries of the Mysteries of Pittsburgh. The Mystery of Pittsburgh. And it was a straight drama with Sienna Miller and some, you know, it's other people, but Sienna Miller was the big star in it. Peter Sarsgaard. Peter Sarsgaard. So it was an actress piece. It was a drama. You know, he wanted to be obviously an auteur and everything. And <laughs> the world said, no, you stay in the dodgeball lane and I will stay in the watching the dodgeball lane, but please don't go out your second film and make mysteries of Pittsburgh. Think about the name. <laughs> and I'm from Pittsburgh. Yeah. I just remember thinking, go, I, I remember going, the, the dodge, what's the new movie? The dodgeball guy's making? Oh, no, 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 no. Mysteries of Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> and he's from San Francisco. <laughs> it, it was a very shocking choice. And I remember watching it and going, 
This guy, it, it, this is not going to do well for his career. And if you look at it, name the other name the other films that he did. We are the Millers. We are the Millers. Central Intelligence. Central Intelligence. And she's greater. And so what happens? Or what happens? He wants to go out and be one thing. He wants to be an auteur. He wants to go out and you know do do a couple for them, make a shitload of money, and then be a dramatist. And no, Hollywood said, nope, sorry. Yeah. We're not only are you not getting the money anymore, but we did give you the money. And look what happened. You made <laughs> <laughs> the mysteries of Pittsburgh. I mean, it's also that there's bad titles. That's a bad title. There's like, you know, the, I, regardless of what you think about the movie, Practical Magic. I mean, that, yeah. it's just, like I remember my friend, we were, we were trying to sneak into uh, an R-rated movie. I can't remember what movie it was around that time. And we had to buy tickets to Practical Magic and then sneak into another movie. Yeah. And I remember him saying that to me. He's like, we can go see uh, House on the Honda Hill, I think it was. Uh, but we have to buy tickets to Practical Magic. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> oh, my God, what a terrible title. We're definitely sneaking out. Three to Tango is also yeah. a terrible title. Like, there's, there's really bad titles out there. Yeah. And bad names. Criminal Psychology. Yep. <laughs> Andrew Pesha, it's another bad name. Yeah. I would definitely change that. Oh, I'm trying to. <laughs> Um, all I'm saying is Robert Eggers, keep doing your thing. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm disappointed that you got this movie taken away from you in post, but he still turned in a, a fine movie. Right. Yeah. I highly recommended you would if you, highly recommend it. Really? Highly recommend it. I do. I enjoy it. Like I if you were a toothbrush, the dentist everywhere would be like, yes. Uh, yeah. A A ADA. I don't approved. know if I'd highly recommend it. I mean It wasn't that bad. No, I'm not saying bad. I'm saying like people that don't like Vikings. Well, there's one person I know that I wouldn't I don't recommend. Like and we're going to recommend it to him anyway. I don't like Vikings. Yeah. If you don't like Vikings, no. If you, I don't like if, Care Bears, man. <laughs> That's what are you talking about? <laughs> what did, what did no you? brown M&Ms for me. Yeah. Because that comes up a whole lot in my life. <laughs> it's such a strange thing. Yeah. Um, highly recommend. I, I would say I recommend it. I recommend it because people that like Gladiator and uh, Ridley Scott films in general, yeah. they'll probably like this movie. And people like Robert Eggers movies. If you really like him, you probably recognize some of the things that I was talking about in it. Um, and it, it's not going to deter you from seeing the rest of his films and that he's going to come out with. Because no matter what, he's not going to compromise and go to do Dodgeball 2. I hope not. He's not going to do that. He's at least established himself as being a filmmaker that has a style and uh, a weirdness all to himself, which I think he should just go flat out balls to the wall. The next one would be like, you thought you thought Lighthouse was weird. Yeah. And you thought that it got taken away from me in in uh, in the, in the Northman. The next movie is going to rock your world. I hope so. I also like the fact they didn't use much makeup on the actors in this, too. Yeah, which um, is, I, 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 which I I think that might have been like at everybody's contract except for Skarsgård because you look at him and go like everybody has no makeup on they look hideous oh my yeah. god what why do you still look good right you put makeup on your abs didn't you I bet he did I'll contour them did. and all that look at a spray tan right everybody you no know, everyone was pale and he's like showing up and like where was he for the past thirty years from when his dad was killed he was on a rowboat pretending to be a wolf in the Bahamas. <laughs> I guess so. It's the second Ethan Hawke movie where he makes weird no animal noises. Can you name the other one? It, uh, in, in, it's in, been in the past 10 years, too. <laughs> it's such a weird, like, it's a one percenter trivia. Like, you can't even get, like, who directed Meet the Fockers. Have I watched this movie? Yeah, we saw it in theaters. And we did a podcast on it, too. <laughs> um, wow. It's a remake. Ethan Hawke was one of the cast. It's a, it's a large scale movie. It's even in it's even in the name. <laughs> I still don't know. Really, nothing. <laughs> Can I buy a vowel? No, you can't. Um, I'm, and I'm not. not even Ethan, tell in you. the past ten years, we saw it. We've done a podcast on it. In the scene I'm talking about, somebody um like is trying. It's a western, and somebody's trying to kill him in like a shootout. And oh, True Grit. No, Ethan Hawke's in True Grit. Well, I, maybe a bit part, but he said it was what? a remake. When would he be in True Grit? And even a bit part. Why would the Coen Brothers? <laughs> Anyway, uh, the scene I'm talking about is, yeah, he's in a gunfight and somebody points a gun at him. And instead of shooting back, he uh, he kind of makes a sound like a snake at them and yells it at them. Oh, wow. What movie is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave you there with it. I will have to look this yeah, up. You're going to have to look that up. But I'm Randomly, saying, I'm going to say the name. And be weird, like, um, weird Ethan Hawke animal noises. He's got two. All right. He's got I like two. Ethan Hawke, man. I do, too. I like yeah. Ethan Hawke a lot. Um, kind of disappointed about the Marvel thing, you know, because I, oh, I, I yeah. thought I, I I'm, I'm not going to quote him and say that he was never going to do Marvel movies. But he seems like the kind of actor that was so into independent film that he's like, no, I will never do a Marvel movie. And then they slide in the check and he's like, let me clarify. Yeah, I will only do <laughs> three Marvel movies. No, if the character's right, I will never do a Marvel movie. Yeah, I have to be able to sniff my fault. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm going to bring the best acting to Marvel movies. It's not Marvel. It's Marvel. <laughs> Marvel. It's marvelous, darling. Marvel. Yeah. Ethan Hawke. Yeah. I mean, what can you do? I, I don't I don't hate anybody or hate on them. For Nobody asked you Marvel. if you did. I hate you now. I, I would do it. Oh, yeah. Did you like The Northman? Not that I care. I did. I said yeah. I, I highly recommend I it. I've been listening to you. I know. You're just so upset about. Yeah, I read that, too. I Now I remember reading that about the audience is testing so low with this movie and I didn't know they were Why are you testing this movie in, in in the first place? It's the it's the Northman and it's Robert Eggers. Did the lighthouse test well? I bet. Okay. It was in that weird aspect ratio like the, from even as from me in the theaters going like it's going to open up, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's Oh shit, I'm no. stuck in this. Yeah, it's the center of the screen right there. You get used to it and I like the kitschiness of it, but it's it's also like remember Mank when they did that yeah. weird, that weird uh, soundtrack where it was the natural one from like the 30s and the 40s. Use the same equipment. Or yeah, whatever, and it yeah. just to- it was so jarring. It kind of ruined the movie for me. I've since come to watch it two or three more times, and I've gotten used to it. But whoa, that was a weird choice. Yeah. In film school, they used to say that if they didn't like it, they wouldn't say that. Oh, I don't like that. The professor was to go. That was a bold choice. Yeah. And I say with Mount Bank, your 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 choice of audio selection and soundtrack was a bold choice, Mister Fincher. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Yep, uh, the Northman. Right. Thanks a lot, Andy. Wait, I was hey. kidding. I can still make my Braveheart movie now, though. Yeah, it's true. It's a, it was I wanted to watch Braveheart after I watched the Northman, yeah. just so I could get my dose of like, hey, that's how life was back then. But I mean, it was just you're talking about like a band of twelve people, the Northman. So it was a very yeah. small movie. It, lot, there lot wasn't a lot of people around in, back in then. Iceland. Yeah, versus like, Scotland. Scotland. Or... That seemed like that was it. It was yeah. easy to rule because it was like, well, who's the strongest guy? Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a new strongest guy that showed up. Who's killing everybody? I don't know. <laughs> we have to find out. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> Are you sure the kid died from when the kid that I killed his dad? And you know, you sure he, you sure he died, right? And you're like, well, he cut off my yeah, he cut off my nose, and uh, he died. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's also a bug. You remember he was lied about it. He's, he's like, like, shit, cut off my nose. Yeah, he's dead. He drowned. Yeah. Fuck that kid. You could have been like, no, nah, I got away, and he cut off my nose. Yeah, right. But, but he, he had to lie. He had been killed or something. Exactly. But <laughs> like, what, yeah, yeah, he's dead, and I. Drag his blood myself. <laughs> ah. That's why I have this nose. Hey, Robbie, what's wrong with your nose? I, did, I was shaved this morning. I cut it off. <laughs> you have a beard. I did this. It's a style choice. Yeah. No way this five-year-old did this to me. And if he did, I'd have killed him. And yeah. he wouldn't have gotten away and then come back in the later movie and killed me. <laughs> Today's episode of the Four Seasons of Film podcast is brought to you by Phil's Coffee. Phil's specializes in handcrafted coffee made one cup at a time. Visit a location today or find them on the web at philscoffee.com. That's phil's with a z, coffee.com. Find the beans you're looking for. <laughs> oh, it's just, just like that. I don't know why. I just watched the movie and I kept going like, jokes just keep coming to me during this movie. Yeah, and a little bit of magic to it as well. And, and then Thor rides off into the sunset. You know, it's... <laughs> yeah, at the end. Yeah. I remember just chuckling at the ending. <laughs> yeah, I should be just like, go, of course this is how it ends. Okay. <laughs> but still, it was still fun, man. It was yeah. a good movie. I miss the days when Willem Dafoe was trying to fuck Robert Pattinson. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking of the end. Man, he was in this too. I thought they, and they kind of like, they, you know, he wasn't in too much, but he could have used a little more his, Dafoe. His dead head was in it. That was right. very that, strange. That was creepy. Yeah. And I, apparently I missed the full frontal everybody was talking about because he went full frontal on this. You remember this? I don't remember seeing any peni. I don't Maybe, remember that either. But he, when they were dancing around the fire. I need to go back and watch this very closely now. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> apparently he's engorged. Oh, really? It makes sense. He has a lot of confidence. Listen, if you don't, if you don't have the you know, the cojones to go back and see somebody when they have something like that, they're sporting something like that, you got your problems on your own. Right. Yeah. You know? Who cares? As any species, whatever you want to, whatever you're going to go by, you, you got to see these uh, these phenomenon when, right. when they exist, for sure. And Everyone then, watch the Pam and Tommy Lee video for one of those reasons. Absolutely. Too, right? Absolutely. Jeez. Rumors. See if there's truth to the rumor. I'm not kind of asshole to yell that at Tommy Lee like in the series. Like people are yelling about his Johnson to him. Yeah. <laughs> and he had to be like, I'm sorry, honey. Just wink at these. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe they're yelling these horrible things at yeah. me like I have a giant peni. Uh, ah, disgusting. My wife's in the room. Yeah. Listen, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Buy me a shot later. <laughs> Uh, we, I don't even want to get into the, the Pam and Tommy thing. Yeah, no, no, no. Talking penises and wow. That was a weird series. That was a very weird series. Um, did you watch anything else or can I cut you off? I watched... Something new. Did you watch anything new? No, The Northman was the newest the newest one. I, I watched uh, The Player from 92. Oh, okay. We, we can, First we, time watch. We can spend about five minutes on that because you're talking about a Robert Altman movie that's 
a lot of people say besides Nashville, which you've never seen. No, I've yeah. seen, I've watched Popeye a million times. We are not even going to mention that he directed that movie. And I don't care what a soft spot you have for that movie is. That movie is a piece of garbage. Okay. It, and I just went on this whole thing about don't say things suck. That movie sucks. Oh, that come on. You can't, you, got, you can't say it. It wasn't no, for you. I watched it three years ago because I went, you know what? Fuck everybody. It's Robert goddamn Altman. There's no way this movie sucks. It's garbage. It's garbage. <laughs> the songs are terrible. The the set looks, it does look like you built this out in the middle of, they were in Malta. You built this in the middle of nowhere. You went to Malta for that? Yeah, they went on location for that. You could have done wow. it in the fucking universal back lot. Robin Williams yeah. like, with the, the arms, the forearms. Well, I get it. You got it. It's a cartoon, so you bring it to life. That, that, the forearms didn't bother. It was just the. <laughs> I don't know how people sat through that screening on opening night. I. I would my jaw would it would have been like the producers, remember in that scene where the everyone in the audience had their, their hands on their faces, yeah. shocked. That's the way I watched that movie. And then some fucking squid shows up and I should give a shit. And he punches the squid. I because <laughs> he eats some spinach. But it's like based on our cartoon though. But that's anyway. that's my point. You go, you watch the cartoon. I'll just go watch the cartoon then. Yeah. Like the original Spider-Man movies with with uh, Sam Raimi. Everybody right. went, well, you don't like them because they're based on comic books and comic books are cheesy like this. And go, But it's not a comic book. It's a movie. You're supposed to adapt it so it's not a comic book and it's a movie. Entertaining right. and believable. If it's going to be a cartoon, they should have just made an animated Popeye movie. And then the voice would have been fine. The song still would have been terrible. Yeah. I mean, besides that, I'm glad you pay Tuesday for a hamburger today. That's the only song that sticks out that I remember the lyrics, though. Awful movie. Just yeah. awful. <laughs> and if you saw it as a kid and you like it, okay, I get it because you were a kid. But even I had a pretty great bullshit detector when I was a kid. I knew when when things when some movies I'm like, I'm not I I don't have too many movies. I liked it when I was a kid. I can't apologize for it now. No, no, no. When I was a kid, I knew it sucked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. R rated movies when I was like four, okay? <laughs> Cliffhanger. Silver spoon of celluloid up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I watched this. Well, Robert Altman. Okay, Robert, Robert Altman. Altman. I, but I watched Robert The Player Altman. for the first time. How dare you when I say Robert Altman, I say Nashville, you go, no, but I did see Popeye. Well, I'm just. What other Robert Altman movies can you name off the top of your head? Don't look at your phone, look at me. Uh, that's it's like only, Get Shorty. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. And I just watched that within the past two years. Uh, that's not Robert Altman. No, it's not. I just Who is watched. That? I um, yeah, no, no, he directed the Adam Sandler. I'll give you that much. No, not not even. We're talking about old. Not, here, okay, <laughs> yeah, let's, we're don't change the subject of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, or lack thereof. Uh, but yeah, no, only honestly, the only other Altman movie I believe I've seen is Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> no, that can't be. That can't be. Go down the list. I'll let you look it up now. Other. Just other ones that you can claim that maybe you 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 sat through on the toilet or something, or listen to me watch maybe that that would even be that would even be satisfying. <laughs> if I was somewhere within the tri-state area. Yeah, you, th you could say you you existed while Robert Altman was. You know, he's like one of the masters of all cinema. I know. No, you don't. You've I, never I seen mean, anything I've by heard. him. I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. You never seen Shortcuts. No. Even though even though his last one, Prairie Home Companion, you never watched that one. <laughs> no. It's not in theaters. You're so disrespectful. Well, what do you want me to do, man? I'm just being honest. He here. directed, okay, the biggest one, uh, Adventures in Babysitting. I okay, watch that. Yeah, he didn't direct that. I'm lying. Oh, that, see how easy I'm, that is I'm, for you? I just got the you, list now. You think Robert Altman could have directed Adventures in Babysitting? He could have directed Popeye. Come on. There could have been a dark Now, face. what year was Popeye? What year was Adventure in Babysitting? I will find out shortly. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going down. Still, you still no. have nothing. Absolutely no, nothing. No. Wow. How? What year are you at? I'm on 1980. Well, who's, what, what movie did you direct in 1980? Popeyes. <laughs> That's where you said. Um, okay. MASH. I've watched MASH, but that was recently. The 70s. The, the 70s okay, movie. Yeah. Uh, not, not the TV show. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which also was the 70s, by the way. You've seen MASH only because I made you watch it about, I think, last year. Yeah. Within the past two years. Okay. Very That's safe. it. You've COVID seen MASH and travel. Popeye. Robert Altman. Oh, my. <laughs> that completes the list. Oh my! <laughs> anyway, so, hey, well, what, so whatever, well, man. At it, least I'll watch the player. With all the movies he directed, if you haven't seen Nashville, this is probably one that I would recommend you watching. I'm definitely never going to re recommend Nashville to you. You're going to be like, when, when does the plot happen? <laughs> so what? I, I, you know, I can take it. Give me a plotless movie that you like. Beside your life, <laughs> touche. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'll, when I you got nothing, it. nothing. 
obviously it wasn't memorable. Nothing happens in this fucking movie. That I mean, I've heard that from a lot of movies. Well, I mean, like I love uh, like uh, slacker. I mean, things happen, but it's not like I see. I I would argue that all plotless movies things happen. Yeah, but it's not. It's some people say cucumbers take better, but right, whatever. Um, so the player is from 1992. 92. 92, starring Tim Robbins. Mm -hmm. And it is about a studio executive who gets involved with the disappearance of somebody who had just tried to pitch him a movie. Right. I, I've seen it. You don't yeah. have to say right. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but why Why do you like the movie? Well, for, first, oh, wait, first of all, did you like the movie? I did. Did you I watch did. it with both eyes open? Yes, I did. Okay, good. Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, I Because it was on, I was start, I'm starting to go off Bill Hader's like 200 comedy movies you're supposed to see of all time. Finish that list. Years I ago. know you did. I'm coming to it. I don't <laughs> watch it. Uh, and then know. he came up with another one. This is the, the director's list. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll get to that in the next decade. Um, but no, I was always like, all right, I was looking for something to watch. I was like, let me go to this list. Let me watch something I've never watched before. Wait a second. So you're going off of Bill Hader's 200 comedies to watch uh, if you're a comedy fan of all time. Comedy writer, comedy And you're fan. literally going just wherever. You're not going from start to finish. No, because I I'm, I, I, wanted, I wanted to watch one that I've never watched Do before. me a favor. It, it's in alphabetical order already. Start with the first one. Nine to five. And anything that you've seen, don't watch. Cancel that out. But anything you've not seen stays on the list. And force yourself to watch alphabetically the first one to Z. Okay. And I promise you... You'll sit through some movies that you don't like very much, but it teaches you to appreciate way more about cinema when you're forced to watch a movie and you have to pull things that you like out of it. Right. Or if you don't like it, you're going to figure out why you don't like it. And you, I will have a better time talking to you, but watch more movies. I, and I've told everybody this if you're into film, watch more movies that you have to watch and analyze versus movies you want to watch because mm -hmm. you're going to learn way more about the movie and about yourself if you watch movies you have to watch. It's why film school is a good thing. It's why college is a good thing. You have to do these assignments because there's something at stake. So you at least have to pay some kind of attention to it. So you're going to retain some kind of knowledge. And if you're in the industry, you should retain all the knowledge yeah. unless it bores you to tears or you absolutely don't like it. But then you should be able to tell me why you're in film. Watch more films that you are supposed to have seen versus more films you have seen or want to see. Yeah. It sounds counterintuitive, but we passion means sometimes doing things we don't want to do, which you are not one of those people. No. You go down the list and you find one you want to see out of 200 instead of just starting at the beginning and I think nine to five is the first one on the I list. I love that. I've seen that a I million think it times. Is. I think it's nine to five is the yeah. first one on that list. And but you can't watch what? Pull that list up while I finish this diatribe against you. And um, um, we mean against you. I, I get punished <laughs> for actually doing what you're saying. And so what's going to happen now is from now we have our main movie on the podcast. But you're going to watch one movie a week from that list that you've never seen before in alphabetical order, and you're going to learn something. You're going to learn you something about this industry that you so. Cla you claim to be a part of. Hey, man. Um, so, so nine to five is the first movie on that list, right? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Nine to five. What the, was the, what's the what's the next movie you haven't seen? Nineteen forty one. You've never seen that because no. that's a Spielberg movie. I, we just talked about this. With yeah, Belushi? so you have yeah, to watch have, that by I've next week. It. Okay. Yeah. Just give me a, a taste of the one after that because this is fun. Abbott and Costello meet the. Oh, we watched that this uh, meet Halloween. Who? Uh, Frankenstein. Yeah, we you, watched this. Um, Ace in the Hole. You never seen Ace in the Hole? No. Oh my god, that's such a great movie. I'm th th just stick to that list from now on. <laughs> I'll actually like respect you as a friend. <laughs> you know, what? fuck you. I'm not. The hey, list you know goes what? By. I'll give you some you know, guilty. Even though it's a brilliant movie, it's probably my favorite movie of all time. But uh, I watch Midnight in Paris on Friday and Saturday uh, three times. <laughs> How? Uh, three times? Three times? Oh, that's yeah. Way. Okay. No, just say like that's insane. You can say that's insane. That is, what, you know what, three that's, times in a weekend, yeah. But they, now, when I say I've seen something shitty, and which Midnight in Paris is not, not it's not that makes me angry. You could what you could look at the Mona Lisa three times a day. That's fine. You look at Biodome three times a day. I'm gonna have you committed. Well, yeah, I haven't watched. I'm gonna have you committed, or I'm just gonna unfriend you in real life. By the way, for, story for the audience: the last time I watched Biodome. I was watching, you know, I don't even want to dignify it. But you got to tell that. Now I want to know what happened last time you watching Biodome. I was watching Biodome in the studio on Earth Day. Oh, who gives a shit? And Nobody remembers it takes place on Earth Day. Nobody gives a shit about that movie but you. And then I'm watching it. I'm like 20 minutes in. 
somebody. I'm not going to say who, but he's on this podcast. I changed the channel. You turned right? off my movie yes. without even saying anything. Yes, because and then you, and then you put on you, then you put on the last half of the sting. Didn't even start it <laughs> over. You just put on the last half of the sting because we, we only have one studio TV. In my defense, I will say this: get friend, friends that aren't filmmakers. Then Biodome's offensive. Get you too, man. It makes. It makes everybody anyway, in the room dumber. I enjoyed the player. Let's get back to the player. I don't want. To I didn't even know what you thought about this movie. No. I, I thought it was great. I didn't know it was like I knew. I didn't, you didn't even know, know it was a murder mystery thing. Huh? I didn't know it was about Hollywood murder mystery and yeah. And another reason why is because funnily enough, I always thought that was I, I. didn't like that part of it. I was like, I don't want. I just want to see them be a part of the studio. I don't want to see a murder. Right. Um. But yeah, I've come to learn to love it for that reason. But that was always, that was my first criticism. I was like, no, I just want to hang on the studio. Yeah. And you know, but that's that's not what the movie was. It wasn't my choice. Yeah. And what tipped it over the edge for me watching is uh, Fred Ward. R.I.P. You know, he was one of them. That we watched it? Yeah. I was like, all right. Let me, oh, it's like, yeah, Fred Ward's in that. Let me watch that. You know, sad news this weekend wow. with his passing. But strange reason to watch the player. But I, I love Fred Ward. And I was not, I, it knocked my socks you off. You look like you'd have a Fred Ward tattoo. <laughs> That's what he was I'm gonna, use that. I'm gonna use that as a line Trevor's. somewhere. I love yeah. his work. That'd be a really good comedy line somewhere. <laughs> like, you look like you should have a Fred Ward tattoo. Um, yeah, Fred Ward, RIP, man. Tremors and uh, Naked Gun, 33 and a third, the yes. final insult. Yes. I think that's what it's called, full yep. title. Um, amongst other, I never saw Remo Williams. I've always wanted to see that movie. It's Fred, Fred Ward starring in a movie by himself and not with Kevin Bacon. Okay. Um, Fred Ward's the only one that came back for all the Tremors, right? Well, not all of them, but yeah, like the, the first, first three. Two or three. Yeah. Um, that, that's one of the, my favorite horror movies, actually. Tremors, the first one. First one. Okay. Yeah, cool. I really do love that movie because it's. They, it's like Jaws. They didn't have any money and they're using things that are in the ground. So they're going to have to get really, really creative here right. to make me scared. And that movie scared the shit out of me when I saw it as a kid. Oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah. That was a scary movie. It was a little bit movie. later on for me, but I was like a teenager, but I fell in love with it. And too. even Tremors 2 is not that no, bad. No. It's not that bad. It's Fred Ward. It's Fred yeah. Ward. Ken Bacon was like, peace. Yeah. I see <laughs> yeah. I went slumming for the first one. Right. Um, you know, see what I'm doing is I'm di I'm diverting attention away from you fucking up Altman. Okay, that's fine. I enjoyed the player. It was a murder mystery <laughs> about Hollywood. Um, really, I you know, I guess you got nothing else to say about it. I don't want to ruin it. Well, I thought I okay. The re I well, no. the, the, here's what I'm asked. The the character goes from studio head, right? He's a studio head in the in the first part. Yeah, and he gets knocked down. Who is scared? Because he does kill this person, right? Right. And then there's another hot shot executive trying to take his job. On his heels. He's killed this person who's just pitched him a movie. The executives are on. How does he kill him? He, they, Why does he kill him? They, they, he pitches him at a, a restaurant and they get in an alt, uh, argument. And then he sees the guy um, while he's taking a piss in the um, alley. In the alley. Uh -huh. And so he starts like pushing his face in a puddle. And then he, he did it too much. Oh. Yeah, and then he so he so he suffocated to death, you got know, it, or drowned to death. And so his it was what, an accident. What I really like about the movie, not to tell you uh, about the movie or why it's good, but you know somebody has, somebody has to. Mm -hmm. um, I like that the char character arc goes from fearless studio head to oh shit I committed a crime to oh shit now I'm even more megal megalomaniacal. By the end of it, I don't give a fuck what I've right. done. I am even more evil now. Yeah, the character arc is scary as fuck. No redeeming qualities at yeah. the end. Tim yeah. Robbins is so scary from you go like, oh, he's a person to, oh, he made a bad mistake to, oh, now he's not a person anymore. He's, he's fucking evil. Yeah. Yeah. He's just evil. And he's what everybody describes studio heads as, you know, being, especially for back in the 90s and earlier than that. But that's my favorite. The character arc is the coolest part of about the, uh, the player. Yeah. And, and you were going to say your favorite part was oh, the no. mud bath. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I, in Tim Robbins' performance, man, especially just being so scared in that when he uh, finally goes, breaks down in front of um, his soon-to-be girlfriend or girlfriend at the, you know, uh, she's the uh, painter. Mm -hmm. And just to see that. And and you're trying to figure out, like, he keeps getting the uh, the postcards of, like, I knew what you did. And there's people that know kind of know what's happening. So is the shoe going to drop? And I love murder mysteries, man. So. Um, good double bill with player. You should watch. Um uh, L.A. Story, Steve Martin's movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's at a great time, around the same time. It might even be 92. But uh, Steve Martin either wrote and directed or just wrote it. I think he just wrote it. Uh, he stars in it, but it's uh, it's a straight comedy, kind of about the studio system, too. And uh, the jokes in it, I think you'll really love. 
My dad used to always tell me the joke about that movie. At the at the sign of the crosswalk says dance, and everybody has to dance across the, instead of walk. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's like it's like that kind of tongue in cheek. Oh, cool. All throughout, it's all L.A. jokes the whole movie. Yeah. I don't even remember what the plot is. It's just basically one big L.A. joke throughout the whole thing. But it's good with the player because after all that murder and mystery, you need something to uh, take the piss out of that yeah. industry. Yeah. But L.A. Sure. story for next week, and also 1941. I'm excited for that one. Yeah, I've, I've always wanted to watch it's it. It's a giant diarrhea joke in that movie. I even Giant uh, diarrhea right, joke. I'll look forward. Mm-hmm. I'll and look it forward actually to. is a really funny joke. They pull it, it off. It still makes me laugh to think about that movie. I thought that was pretty funny. Okay. Yeah. You're going to love You're gonna love that joke. I'm going to hear you cackling from the studio. I, you're like, oh, he's watching the diarrhea joke. Yeah. yeah or Biodome. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get the hell out of here. You've already ruined enough of my time. Hey, what, what did you- I just say? I, I don't know. Hmm. I think you're just uh, you're talking talking gibberish. I never listen to these, so I'll never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just insert like anything into these, and I would be like, ah, ah, did I say it last week? I don't know. Andy is amazing. <laughs> he is the best. It's like <laughs> he is so cool. Yeah, you should do that, or just say something really offensive the whole time. You're like, that was Nathan Robert Blackburn. <laughs> Three names. See, I, I have integrity. I wouldn't do. That. Oh please! I, uh, I I am a man of principles. Integrity, integrity. Yeah. Oh God. I. You know what? That's a good place to leave because that's the biggest joke of today. <laughs> biggest joke on the podcast. All the jokes I made. That's we're gonna go out on a high note because that was hilarious, hilarious, Andy. Well, thank you. Uranus, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Sh- shout out to our friend Paul. All right, keep him alive. <laughs>